friends, what's going on? This is David Potts, and I'm going to show you in this video how to play the Guy Clark song, My Favorite Picture of You. Okay, this is a great song. came out in uh, 2013. It's from his final album. Willie Nelson also did a cover of this song, and you can use everything I'm about to show you here to play the Willie Nelson version as well. The only difference is capo 2 for Guy Clark's version, capo 3 for Willie Nelson's version, but use the chords I show you and you'll be in good shape. I'm going to show you uh, everything you need to know, right? Uh, talk about the, the chord progression, the chords, um, some of the trickier fingering I rep recommend doing for some of the chords to get the transitions to be nice and easy, right? I'm going to talk about the timing and the rhythm because that's important. Uh, there's This song has a very slow and languid and casual and conversational feel almost. It's not very uh, precise and specific with how it's played. Um, and I think that there is though a pulse, a rhythmic pulse that you want to capture. I'm gonna explain that, right? And whether you finger pick it, whether you strum it, whether you're fancy or whether you're simple, this this sort of um, this timing and this rhythm advice I'm gonna give you is going to apply. And at the very end, I'm gonna show you um, a tab that I put together. This is kind of how I play it using everything I'll show you in this lesson. It's a bit more approximate. Um, I'll explain, you know, the places where I'm a bit more free and off the leash. Because again, this is a song where you want to kind of take it uh, and have fun with it, be free with it. And there's a Guy Clark version I'll, I'll put in my uh, my website you can link, right? This is him playing it. And he's, this is near the end of his life and his, not, his guitar is a bit rusty, but it works and it's cool seeing him play in that very honest style. Stripped down, solo guitar. Uh, anyway, so I'll show you that, but if you haven't heard this song, check out the album, or just the, this song off the album. Two or three guitars in there, great background vocals, the production is amazing, and it's just great storytelling. And uh, hearing Guy Clark talk about how he wrote this song and uh, all that sort of stuff is super cool. And one quick reminder is the PDF song notes that I wrote up for this lesson are available on my website. This is a print-friendly way to sort of uh, access all my notes for this song. You can print it out, keep it in your iPad, on your computer, laptop, whatever you want, have it in your notebook of songs, and it's a great way to sort of learn this outside of this video. Because I can teach you what I'll teach you in this video, but it's not going to be something you're going to master in the course of watching it, right? You're going to need to practice, and my notes here are a great aid. So check out playsongnotes.com. Thanks to all of you who do support me on Patreon and through my tip jar. It's tremendously appreciated and I hope all my notes are helpful for you. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about with this song is the structure, right? The structure is the same progression. It's just played five times. You're going to have it once in the intro with no words. Then you have each of the four verses is played with this same progression. So there's no verse chorus. It's all just one verse over and over and over and over and over again. So I'm going to teach it to you. And once you learn it once, you can apply it to all the verses. That's a great part about it. Okay. So um, now this is what the progression looks like, right? Um, things are broken into measures. Measures are separated by these bars here. It's going to be four counts per measure. And I think the first thing I want to talk about here, even before I get into how to play the chords, is just talk about this timing and the rhythm and the pulse and the feel of this song. Um, and specifically, if I play through this progression, uh, instead of doing two counts on the A7 sus4, and then two counts on the A7, and then two counts on the A7 sus4, and two counts on the A7, and two, and then two, what we're going to actually do is use this timing, right? Where we're going to have our pulses on the one count, one and two and three. Right? The one count and then the and count just after the two. So if I was to play the first two measures and I sort of count it out loud, listen to the sound of just even simple strums on these pulses, how it sounds, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Right? My favorite picture of you is the one where you're staring straight in the lens. Right? So whether you're strumming or you're picking, the same, uh, the same pulse, the same feel is going to apply. So um, if nothing else, I recommend taking note of this, this timing and then put the song on, listen to it, count along, tap your leg, do whatever, because having this feel sort of in your head from the beginning is going to make uh, it easier as you learn the chords and as you start to put things together. Okay, so I wanted to talk about that. You can make it as fancy as you want with your strumming. I'm not going to show you a fancy strumming version, or you can do finger picking like I like to do. Right? But the same counting, the same pulsing is going to apply. So I wanted to talk about that. But um, next, why don't we go through, uh, look at this progression and look at the chords and learn them. So the, the, main, the main ones I'll start with here are 
probably the hardest part, which is getting from this A7 sus4 to an A7, right? You're gonna do that twice. Then you're gonna go to this D add six to a regular D, okay? I'm gonna break these down, right? Now, um, you kinda have to, especially with the D, you have to sort of unlearn what you may already know with the D. For a while, I was learning this song by doing a D and putting my pinky down here for the D add six. That's technically valid, right? But to match what Guy Clark is doing and to get it as casual and easy as he's doing, you really wanna use different fingering. And here's what it is. So for the A7, and the A7 says four, uh, what I would recommend learning is starting off with the A7. It's just open, second, open, second, open, right? Then it's five strings, that's your A7, okay? The A7 says four, you wanna get used to putting your ring finger down on the third fret of the second string. Get used to going back and forth, and you want to make sure all your notes are clean, right? When you're strumming or you're picking, you don't want any muffled notes, right? Now, what I like to do is sort of do a finger style where I have my thumb on the, the bass note of whatever chord I'm playing. So if it's the A chord, it's going to be the fifth string. And then I use my index and middle finger to get the um, B string and the G string, right? Right? So one pluck of A7 says four, one pluck of A7, right? Just practice going back and forth. Right? So again, it's the fifth string, third string, and second string. Get used to getting uh, going back and forth between those two chords. It's going to get tricky in a second. Now for the D add six, what we're going to do, this might be a little bit different for you, is um, two things. First, with these two fingers that are on our A7 chord here, we're going to slide our middle finger up here to the third fret. And then with our um, index finger, we're going to move it from the fourth string to the third string, but keep it on the second fret again, right? So what we're gonna pluck is the fourth, third, and second string. Okay? This is technically the D that I, that I have in my chart here, but uh, the D at six is putting your ring finger down on the fourth fret of the third string. So you wanna get good going between the D at six and the D. But when you're playing this in practice, what's gonna happen is you're gonna go from the a7 sus4 to the a7, right? And then you're gonna go to the D at six. But when you go to the D at six, I recommend practicing it so such as that you're going from the A7 to a D, but then add in your ring finger, right? Um, I think that if you can get good at going to the D shape and then you add your ring finger, it just makes it feel more sturdy, right? Because the, the D add six and the D are really the same foundation, it's just your ring finger is the only difference, right? So those first uh, four chords, right? So this is the first thing you really want to get comfortable with. And this will take some time. This honestly took me uh, three or four days of practicing like a half hour a day to get really casual and comfortable and, and smooth with it. I was watching TV last, I was watching a movie yesterday and I was sort of ha was playing in the background and just kind of doing it mindlessly. And that's really the key to be able to do it um, effortlessly, right? But those are the, the, the most difficult transitions you're gonna need to make, right? <laughs> Still messing up here and there. So now if we look at the progression, those four chords I just showed you make up the first two lines, which is a great part. So if we took our counting and we just did a single strum, we would have this, right? Um, da, 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 da. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and one and two and three and four and, right? So that's gonna be the first, that's like half the, the whole song, half the progression is just what I just showed you, right? I will say, I didn't, I didn't teach this yet, but to, to come into the first chord, what you wanna do is get in that A7 position, right? Put your uh, ring finger down and then just pluck the second and third string three times. And then you go into the A7, so it's four. I'll get to my tab showing you those specific notes in a minute. But basically that's gonna be the first two lines. And then uh, the third line here is going from an A7 to an A7 with a star. And what that means is it's basically another way of playing A7 where we're gonna put our ring finger down on the uh, third fret of the high E string, right? Third fret relative to the capo, of course. So A7, A7 with a star, and then a B minor. 
Now you could play a full B minor. I actually don't do that when I play it. I just do um, index finger on the fifth string, second fret, middle finger on the second fret of the first string, ring finger on the third fret of the second string. only three strings I'm plucking so it works and it's a lot easier than doing a bar chord and you're gonna go to an E or an E7 right I kind of just do an E and in my tab I'll show you how I do add this seventh note which is putting your pinky down on the third fret of the B string right and then an A7 for two measures now that I've showed you all the chords let me play through the whole progression and I'm gonna do just the plucking on the main counting right so A7 plus 4, A7, now D at 6 to D, right? Repeat that all again. The D at 6. One more time. D at 6, D. Now A7 for 4. B minor, E, or E7, and then A7. And you could sing it like that. My favorite picture of you is the one way you're staring straight into the lens. And I recommend starting off this sort of casual and simple if your goal is to sing. You were so Polaroid shot. Someone took on the spot. No beginning, no end. It's just a moment in time you can't have back. You never left but your back. Just in case. My favorite. Okay, so that's basically how you could uh, just do the simple pluck in on the one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and you could play the whole song like that. Um, and we could get a bit more tricky with the finger picking. That's actually what I'm going to show you now. So I have this tab here, um, and this is kind of an approximation of how I sort of like to play this song. And let, let me. Um, sort of go through it bit by bit here and talk about what I'm doing. So for the first uh, three notes that count into the song, again, you wanna do the, just do a brush with the middle and index finger um, on the second and third string, and then do the, go from the A7, sus4 to the A7, right? So you're actually gonna change to the A7 on the one and count, right? So. that again. This is the first line again, right? Okay, second line. Same thing right here. Now it gets different at the end here. Um, the second time you do the D add six, it starts the same. To end that second line, what I like to do is, this is where it gets tricky and nuanced, is I put, put my, um, I get basically go to a regular D shape. So I want to accent this note, this F sharp note. So what I do is, I actually bar the second um, fret on the thinnest three strings, right? And then I play, on the four count, I play just the first two strings, and then an A add six on the one count of the next measure. So that's basically, open fifth string, and then second fret on the second and first string. And then I go to an A7, and that's kind of tricky. So again, that final D at six would be this. And I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so that last two lines there gets a bit fancy. So but again, um, this is unnecessary, but I, li I like what it sounds like when you go to the D add six, right? Or A add six, right? So coming out of the D right here. This is an A add six to an A seven or an A, same thing. And then uh, the next measure is when we go from the A to the A seven with this note, okay? Now going up to the B minor, I go open first, 
So I go open first, second on the fifth string, right? And when I pluck the B minor, I'm actually plucking the fifth, second, and first string, but the second and first string are open. And then I'm sort of hammering on or just bringing down my middle and ring finger on the second and third fret of the thinnest two strings. Then I pluck all three, pluck the open first string, pluck third fret on the second string, right? So that B minor measure is this. Then the E, open sixth, second, and first string. And then I walk it down from the open high E string, third fret on the second string, open second string, right? So, and that matches the melody of what you hear. You know, your, um, your bags were packed and then just in case. Now for the final two measures of the A7, um, in my simple version, I showed you it all as A7. I like to just run around a little bit between the A7, the A sus4 and the A and the A2, back to A, then you sort of do that final pulse of three and it starts it all over again. So let me do a full playthrough of this one more time to show you what it sounds like. You get the idea, right? So I was adding a lot of uh, just free notes there. And by free notes, I mean I sort of learned the tab as I showed it to you, right? But then as I get comfortable with that, I'm sort of letting my fingers just dance a little bit and kind of just add subtle notes. And that's the kind of thing I'm not gonna tab out because it gets kind of ridiculous. I'm just, when I'm playing it, I'm just sort of, just kind of doing the muscle memory sort of thing, right? And um, I encourage you to, uh, don't feel like you have to do this and see it as something you work your way up to. This is not how I started playing this song. I was very deliberate, right? I sort of, in, in what I showed you in this video, that sort of mapped how I learned this song. I was just doing single strums for a long time, but then I would sort of add in the other strums, right? So you can be as simple or as loose as you want. And uh, that's sort of the joy with this song. So, and one last thing is let me just sing a measure, a verse or two here to give you an idea of what this sounds like when you put it all together, right? So. My favorite picture of you is the one where you're staring straight into the lens. It's just an old Polaroid shot someone took on the spot. No beginning, no end. Just a moment in time Can't have back You never left But your bags were back Just in case My favorite picture of you Is bent and faded And it's pinned to my wall When you were so angry It's hard to believe That we were lovers at all there's a fire in your eyes, got your heart on your sleeve Curse on your lips, oh but all I can see is the beautiful My favorite picture of you is the one where your wings are showing When your arms are crossed, your fists are clenched, you're not Gone but going yeah. Just a stand-up angel Who won't back down Nobody 
nobody's found and nobody's <laughs> clown you a smarter yeah i hope this is helpful for you right this is a song that's um it's uh it's tricky but then you kind of seem like oh i gotta hang in this this isn't too bad but then you kind of realize oh it's actually a lot tougher tougher and there's a lot under the surface if you want to get that nuance and really be uh stone cold uh no mistakes when you're playing because that lets you sort of sing it and uh make it sound really good so i hope this is helpful for you again um check out the website playsongnotes.com this is lesson number 268 and you can search for it there and find it i have some other guy clark lessons as well and i hope you have found this helpful this has been a dear joy of a song to learn and uh, hopefully some degree of that has been passed on to you so with that I shall leave you have a great one my friends remember pick up your guitar and a play and I'll see you around bye bye